Hi guys, oh, welcome to my channel. So today's the topic of discussion is volume of distribution. This is the sequel of the plasma protein binding lecture which we have already discussed. This is the fourth lecture of the pharmacokinetics. So if we want to simplify the term volume of distribution, what we meant is that when the drug was taken inside the body, after the absorption, the drug has to get distributed inside our body. Now the amount of drug that gets distributed into the various tissues, that is known as volume of distribution, but this is the layman language or the simpler language, right? If we want to compute volume of distribution in a numerical form, it comes out to be that it is the amount of drug that you are giving to the patient and then you divide that amount of drug with the plasma concentration which is achieved in that patient after giving the drug. So if we add on these values, uh, we divide these values, we get the volume of distribution, right? So basically now volume of distribution is the apparent volume of distribution now what do you mean by apparent term apparent is that it's a misnomer it is not the actual volume it is the hypothetical volume in which the drug is getting distributed now if we are saying it as a volume of distribution that means the units measured will be in liters or milliliters so for volume of distribution the unit is around is actually the liters now in order to understand this term the apparent term we will be explaining with the help of three scenarios right consider that this is this beaker which is shown in this figure consider that the volume of this beaker is around 5 liters right and you are giving 100 milligrams of the drug so if you want to compute the plasma concentration what will happen is that 100 milligrams you are giving and 5 liter is the volume of this beaker so the plasma concentration will come out to be 20 milligrams per liter that 1 liter of the volume which is there it will contain 20 milligrams of that drug but this is a uniformly distributed beaker there is no compartment this is one compartment model. In second scenario if you consider this beaker supposedly contain fishes. Now, if you give 100 milligrams of drug to in this beaker, fishes will take half of the volume of the drug. Drug which you are giving 50 milligrams, let's say, is taken up by the fishes and only 50 grams is left behind. So, what is the plasma concentration now? It will come out 50 divided by 5 liters, that 5 liters is the volume. The plasma concentration comes out to be 10 milligrams per liter, right? Then comes the third scenario. Now this there is a beaker, similar dose you are giving 100 milligrams, but instead of fishes, now you have a crocodile in this beaker. So now instead of taking 50 milligrams, which was taken up by the fishes, now the crocodile is taking around 90 milligrams of the drug. So what is left behind? Yes, only 10 milligrams is left behind. So the plasma concentration in this beaker will come out to be 10 milligrams which is left behind divided by 5 and the value will come out to be 2 milligrams per liter. So if you see in these three scenarios the plasma concentration is different. The more is the drug taken up by some organ consider that fishes and a crocodile as some organ in your body less is the plasma concentration now you have to compute the volume of distribution so what will be the volume of distribution if you look at the three scenarios now volume of distribution was in the first slides we discussed that it is the amount of drug given divided by the plasma concentration so in first case the plasma concentration came out to be 20 milligrams so the volume of distribution was 5 liter which is equal to the volume of the beaker beaker was also 5 liters and the volume of distribution is 5 liters it had to come out 5 liters because we said that it is uniformly distributed but what happens in second scenario now here the volume of distribution came out to be 10 liters why it came out to be 10 liters because the plasma concentration was just 10 milligram per liter 100 milligrams you gave the dose and 10 milligrams was the 
plasma concentration. So the volume of distribution came out to be 10 liters. Now this is the apparent volume. The volume of the beaker is just 5 liters. It is exceeding the value of the beaker. That is why we say that it is the apparent volume of distribution and it is not the exact volume of the body. Our body contains only 5 0.5 liters of blood so the blood gets inside the tissues that's why the amount of volume of distribution which comes out to be is more than the volume of plasma present inside the body what happens in third scenario now the volume of distribution comes out to be 50 liters because plasma concentration was way too less it was just 2 milligrams so the volume of distribution for third scenario came out to be 50 liters so Different drugs have different volume of distribution and it can cross the volume of the plasma which is present inside the body. Now, if you have to define volume of distribution, it is the apparent volume. This we have already discussed with that scenario. Apparent volume of plasma. Why are we are saying plasma? Because the volume should be in liters. So what is the volume of plasma which is required for the drug? To get distributed uniformly or equally if we consider that drug is uniformly distributed how much volume will be required for that drug that is known as apparent volume of distribution now, there are two key points which I want to emphasize in this lecture which is related to the previous lecture I will be uh, leaving the link to the previous lecture in the description box so the key point is related to the plasma protein in the last lecture we said that plasma protein binding what happens is that drug is bound to the plasma protein so now the drug is there itself in the plasma it is not getting distributed so if it is not getting distributed it is inversely related to the volume of distribution more is the plasma protein binding for a drug less will be the volume of distribution Second important point is related to the hemodialysis. Now hemodialysis is done in cases of the poisoning. Now if we want to remove the drug, there should be two prerequisite conditions for that drug. One is that the drug should have low plasma protein binding. That is why it will be removed. Also it should have low volume of distribution because if it is going into the tissues, then you cannot take that drug outside with the help of dialysis. That is why the two prerequisites involve low plasma protein binding and low volume of distribution, right? Now this volume of distribution has a very, very important clinical importance. This can be explained with the help of a drug known as chloroquine. Now chloroquine is the anti-malarial drug. It has maximum volume of distribution. This is asked many a times which is the drug which has maximum volume of distribution and that is chloroquine which has 13,000 liters of volume of distribution. Imagine the amount of volume of distribution chloroquine has. That means the whole lot of drug is taken up by the tissues of our body. Now let's consider this example. Supposedly, now supposedly before we go into the details, consider that the target concentration required for chloroquine to show its effect is 100 molecules. If the plasma contains 100 molecules, then only there will be the therapeutic effect of that drug. Supposedly, you are giving 1000 molecules, then 100 molecules come into the plasma. Where is the left 900 molecules gone? It is taken up by the liver. That means why there is so much volume of distribution of chloroquine because out of 1000 molecules 900 is taken up by the liver and 100 molecules which come inside the plasma they will show their therapeutic effect now there is a catch to this what if i give only 500 molecules of chloroquine then there will be no therapeutic effect seen why because we require 100 molecules and that 100 molecules is only achieved when we are giving 1000 molecules if we give 500 then only maybe only 50 molecules are coming in the plasma and rest 450 is going into the liver so there will be no therapeutic effect in that case so this the whole larger dose of chloroquine which is given it is known as loading dose it is known as loading dose we have to load the patient with 
the large amount of dose because maximum amount of drug is taken up by the tissue and the rest of the drug which is left in the plasma that is only available for its therapeutic effect. So there are few drugs which have high volume of distribution we have to give the larger dose for those drugs and that dose is known as loading dose. So this is very quite clear from this only that the loading dose the numerical form of loading dose will contain one component as volume of distribution. So the formula to measure the loading dose is equal to target concentration multiplied by volume of distribution. Now there is one other term which is known as maintenance dose. Now maintenance dose has nothing to do with volume of distribution because if a drug is given to a patient, the drug will not work forever. It will go outside the body. So the maintenance dose is known as the replenishing of the drug which is removed outside the body. The drug which is getting cleared from the body, we are replenishing that amount of drug with the help of the maintenance dose. So what will be the formula for calculating maintenance dose? It will be equal to the target concentration multiplied by the clearance. Now clearance is what is the term which is utilized for clearing out of the drug. The, it is the amount of drug cleared per unit time, right? So the maintenance dose has to do with the clearance and loading dose, they are the important component related to the loading doses, volume of distribution. So this you should keep in mind that which component is related to which kind of dose. So with this, we have completed the topic of volume of distribution.